be intermingled, then the biostatistician would separate them to see if there was a statistical difference that could be seen. And that now has gone to the stage of being done uh, by imaging, as is done here by Dr. Harsh. You can see the changes much more quickly and objectively, uh, the before and the after, whereas before it was just simply by doing a neurologic examination. Dr. Sanchez, you see these kind of remarkable things where you come from as well, huh? Yes, sir, we do. Uh, Hepaparic has proven for certain conditions others than neurological they are accepted of, uh, by the underseen hyperbaric medical society that the earlier you treat them the better and you get that dramatic improvement in in crush injuries uh, to the uh, arms or to the legs so it, it does happen again in the same area in the same way in, in, in the brain but you have to treat them earlier the earlier the better but the results are very remarkable and, and if you see we restore a lot of the functioning that is damaged through the inflammation process and we will be able to recover that penumbra of the damaged area that is still striving to survive and if we don't do it early it will just extend and yeah. profound this interesting very interesting. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, Dr. Hark. I was uh, curious if this technique is being used on uh, any of the soldiers in Iraq who suffer brain injuries, and if not, why? Are you a plant? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if you don't know him. I don't know him. One of the things we wanted to discuss today, I took this to the U.S. military in, 19, er, in 2004. We went to Walter Reed Army Hospital and tried to get them to institute this, even had a chamber donated. Last year, $2 million was donated to buy chambers to put in Walter Reed. Our program actually wanted to get the chambers out in Iraq, in Afghanistan, or at Landstuhl in Germany, and we couldn't get it done. Last year we had a conference call with all the heads of the military in the Armed Services Chairman of the House of Representatives Office, and we still couldn't get it done. But now we've got an appropriation or an application in the appropriation process that went in last week uh, that's called the Brain Injury Rescue and Rehabilitation uh, a proposal. And what it calls for is a multi-center randomized prospective trial, but in which all of these Iraqi brain injured veterans will be treated. They'll be in a control group and an experimental group, and then they'll cross over. So, yes, well, we'd like to, we're trying to. I, I hope you're able to do that. Uh, my producer, Nikki, and I went to uh, Baghdad uh, three years ago, a very interesting place, and then 18 months ago, I was in Landstuhl in Germany. What an incredible hospital that is. And if you were able to get something done there, because I don't think most people know that, that most of the Iraqi soldiers end up in Landstuhl right there. Right. And well, so we need you to write your congressman to support this. But the second part is we were trying to get it for the acute injury. And we've talked about randomized trials. There are five of them in acute severe traumatic brain injury with hyperbaric oxygen, four of which are showing the same thing that you can reduce death by up to 60%. Or worded another way, the group that gets hyperbaric oxygen has 150% chance of survival. It's powerful, yeah. but we're not using it. Well, I'm gonna come back to that writing your congressman okay. stuff in a minute. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll hold the microphone, thank you. <laughs> uh, this is for Dr. O'Toole. Uh, suppose you were at a restaurant and stroked suddenly and were unconscious. How could you uh, uh, assure yourself that you would be treated with hyperbaric oxygen as quickly as possible. There's no way to assure such a thing at the present time in the United States. Even if you're uh, next door in, in the doctor's dining room, uh, you won't necessarily be treated with either hyperbaric medicine or the TPA that people are claiming should be done. Uh, we want to do a trial that proves that it's useful and effective and then redesign the healthcare delivery system so that stroke becomes the true emergency that it is and the patients get in quickly enough to be treated either with TPA or with oxygen or with both. Well, it almost seems as if, um, because you know we have these heart machines that'll you know, pump your heart or something if it, if it stops, are you guys trying to get to the point, Dr. Sanchez, where, you, where people can will know enough about this like they do about you know, restarting a heart so that if, if this thing happened, that th somebody would know that we ought to get him some uh, oxygen? We, we actually set two pilot studies in, in stroke in adults and in the hypoxic event of the neonates. And, and we are able, with very few patients still, we are in the young 
part of it, but we were able to get patient refer very early within the three hour period that is the ideal part of it. And we get great results that are going to be published very soon. It's very important to get them early. Well, let me ask you this. How do you know, let's take these young, young men here as an example, how, how, how would they have known that there was a problem at three hours or something? Or would they have known that? Normally they would. There is, uh, the neonatologists have several ways of, of measuring this and have for the last 35 years known very well to predict which patient is going to suffer it. Uh, and, and also in the last 32 years they haven't really made any substantial uh, improvement in the, in the, in the uh, outcome of these patients because we have no neuro early neuroprotector medication or magical cure mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure Hepavax is not the magical cure also but it reduces uh, the damage area and it recovers that area that is okay. called the penumbra. Well we need a massive publicity campaign to alert the public um, as to what the warning signals are. Transient ischemic attacks we call them TIAs. They used to be called little strokes, but they're warning signals. Mm -hmm. You can have weakness and then you recover uh, quickly, and most people would say, well, that's just, I don't want to worry about it. But that's a warning signal for stroke. We need a massive publicity campaign. Okay, an education campaign to tell people what's happening to them, et cetera. Right. And then the last thing, we only have about 30 seconds left, Dr. Harch, you, you want that viewer to do what specifically? My position is that there is substantial evidence already and accumulating evidence to argue that hyperbaric oxygen is a generic drug for treatment of both acute and chronic brain injury. And what I'm suggesting to people is that the downside, at least in chronic brain injury, is so minimal that you should seek this for yourself. And we will try to bring the additional research studies online. All right, we want to get those research studies online. Show that if you just hold, well, it, up, hold it up next to you. Ten like years there. ago, the group... Uh, here, uh, plus many others, tried to put together a hyperacute hyperbaric oxygen treatment for cerebral ischemia, and it just sits in it on sits. a shelf without. And it doesn't need to sit anymore. I think the three of you, the three of you for being here, and all you folks here for being with us too, great stories. And you know, hopefully, you will never have a personal experience which could benefit from this therapy. But on the other hand. If you or someone you love does, let's hope any doubts are put to rest with additional testing and experience. Thanks for inviting us in to talk about things that matter with people who care. If you would like to purchase a DVD or video of this program for $20 plus $5 postage and handling, and in Texas, applicable tax, call 214-442-1600 or email info at frtv.org. Visit McQuistian on the web at www.frtv.org. Production of McQuistian is made possible in part by individual viewers, the Hatton W. Sumner's Foundation for the Study of Teaching and Self-Government, Hillcrest Foundation founded by Mrs. W. W. Carruth Sr., CF and Company LLP, serving Dallas-Fort Worth and the Southwest since 1956, and Sundown Ranch, providers of comprehensive and co-occurring disorder treatment to adolescents and young adults. Uh -huh.